everyone. This is Tara with Uh Oh Creations and I am working on a bag tonight and I wanted to install some hardware that I picked up from Bringberry. Um, the hardware I wanted to install is these, uh, I'm totally blanking on the name now, but these V-shaped handbag strap connectors and they may be a little confusing to some people so I thought I'd spend a couple of minutes and show you how I'm installing them. I'm not going to say it's the right way, but I'm going to say it's the way that worked for me. <laughs> so when I received my hardware, I received this backing, or this piece here, this plate. Okay, it has two screws holding on the backing plate on it, which I'm going to take out right off the bat. And I do have my magnetic tray here. It keeps all my screws from flying all over the place. And my two long screws I just pulled out. I'm going to keep them separate from all the other screws that I had received in my kit. Okay, so now I have a little backing plate and then I have the front part of that. You'll notice it's got two screw holes here too, so I know I'm gonna have to screw things in there, taking the protective cover off right away. I then have this little triangle piece. And this triangle piece, if you take a look at the back, has a place to insert screws as well as a place to insert the bar of my connector. Almost like we're putting a D-ring in there. And then we have the connector part. And this has a skinny end and a big end. The big end is going to be for the actual handle. And the skinny end is going to go into the diamond piece. Now this one has a fun piece of plastic to get off and I haven't found a good way of doing that yet. So I just keep working at it until I figure it out. There we go. So again, plastic off of that one. So something to point out here is these connectors are a three quarter inch connector. So when I lay it on my cutting mat here, you'll see that the inside of it is smaller than the one inch. If I place it on my ruler, I can see that three quarters of an inch between here and here is how wide my strap needs to be. So your pattern may need to be adjusted to accommodate a three quarter inch strap connector. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slip my ring inside the little notch for it and then I'm going to stick this onto my diamond piece. Okay? And then I'm going to insert screws into both of those locations. So I'm going to set this on my bag. The only reason I'm doing that is because it's soft on the metal. These screws, I'm going to use two short ones that came in my collection. And they have a big enough head on them that I can use a full size Phillips screwdriver. Now I store my screwdrivers on a magnetic bar that I had picked up from Ikea. So that means that they never come unmagnetized and they become magnetized, so they hold my screws on really, really well. I'm also using thread locker to ensure that these screws never come out down the road. There are many, many types of thread locker. Loctite 262 is a high strength. This came from my husband's garage, so therefore it is a high strength. We used this on the screws that went into a metal bunk bed frame and those screws did not come out. 
no matter how much jiggling happened. When you put thread locker onto your screw, it's just a dot. It's also why I have a piece of paper towel sitting here, just in case. Um, also be aware that thread locker may not come off your fabric if you get it on your fabric. I have not experienced that issue, so I'm pretty risky with it. I'm also very quick at getting it off if I need to. So I have attached one screw to affix this. I'm just making sure that my plastic isn't caught underneath before I put on the other screw. So one more screw here, and a dab of thread locker, steady hands, and screw it in. So my connector is now together. I do want to point something out with these. When you look at the fronts of them, you have a recessed section in here, okay? Which means that you could actually fussy cut a piece of leather, vinyl, cork, fabric, and insert it into there, recognizing that you do need to glue it down or affix it in some manner that it's going to stay. But that would give you a very unique piece here. When you do that, I do recommend folding it over that top edge and just down in behind so that it would come down maybe even into that screw there so that you're holding it down and glue it really, really well. But that would give you a color finished connector. I just want the nickel look, the, the fancy silver. Okay, so my next thing I need to do is I've prepared the front of my bag. I'm working on a Swoon Brooklyn, just the handbag size, which is why I thought that these would be perfect for it. Um, and what I've done to prepare my markings for a unique connector is I've taken the pattern piece and I've laid it down here and I folded it over at the top of the handle connector placement. Now, if you think about how you're doing handle connectors on this bag, you have this handle connector and it folds over at the top there with your rectangle ring, okay? So that is the top fold or the bottom of your rectangle or D-ring that would hold your handle. So if I make sure that the bottom of my rectangle ring or my D ring is also in that place, I should have a good placement on my handle connectors. So what I've done here is I've laid this down and because I didn't want to draw on my leather, when I laid that down, I laid a piece of painter's tape right across that top edge, right at the very top of where I want this to be. I then, on my painter's tape, made a little marking just in pen on the painter's tape. Not sure you can see them even. Where those connectors are, the edges of that connector is going to be. Okay, so I did that on this side, then I flipped it over and did it again on this side. This is going to give me that perfect placement for where I need this to be. So now I've got my connector prepared, I can line it up here. If I peel back a little bit more of this plastic, then I can flip this down and I'm dealing with just the top edge of the connector. And when I lay it down here, I'm gonna get my head in your way probably, I'm looking at those marks and I'm making sure my handle connector is centered. I'm also making sure that it looks perfectly straight. And if I wanted to, I could grab a ruler and double check this, looking for that perfectly straight line coming down my connector. So here I could take this ruler and just line it up all the way down here. 
Loctite everywhere already. Okay. So if I'm working with fabric, something I might do is put some chalk just from my chalk pen. I happen to have green right here. Dust some chalk across that. And then when I set it down in the right spot, it'll leave chalk impressions. So I'd push it down a little bit, it'll leave an impression and a chalk impression. In this case, I know that it's a little soft underneath here so I can make an imprint on my leather. So I've just lined it up perfectly. I'm gonna push it down. And I get an imprint of my three screw holes. One, two, three. Okay. So if you take a look, my three holes Not sure if you can see the silver. My three holes line up with my three screw holes. So the next tricky part is hole punching those. And I'm going to do it with my hand tool because it's handy and because I'm gonna have to fold over my fabrics, or in this case, my leathers. Shift my Loctite out of the way. Turn it around here. Don't be afraid to fold your fabrics out of your way. You are going to smoosh this bag through a tiny hole at the very end of your project. So don't be afraid of it. I'm not confident in that hole location. I'm gonna check it one more time. Oh, it's right. Fold over the top edge there, tuck in. Okay, so just squeezing really well. And peeling out the material from the hole. Okay, just pulling out that. There is a layer in the back there that's not punched. I can see it. I'm not gonna worry about it yet. I'm gonna get my holes punched and then worry about those things after. Okay, so the other thing is I'm not using the smallest hole on my hole puncher. This tool came from Tandy Leather. Um, it is, it does have multiple hole punches. You can see I have one out right now. They are removable tips, which means they're replaceable tips and they're the same tips I'll use in my rivet press when I'm cutting holes in there as well. This is the smallest one here, but when I go to shove these posts through the hole, that's just not going to cut it. So I've just visually lined it up to see which one looks like it's going to cut a hole the right size for me. Okay, and then I've rotated it to that hole. So let's cut my next hole here. This does take hand strength and every so often something just won't punch for me. So I'll head out to my husband and get him to finish the squeeze for me. Now you'll see we also have one to do quite a ways up on the project instead of quite near the edge. Again, don't be afraid to squish your project. Okay, so I'm folding under that edge and then I'm going to fold under my project, keeping in mind I don't want extra layers behind that hole. But I want my tool to reach. So again, before you punch, make sure there isn't anything else in your way. You don't want any of these layers up here. 
Make sure your hole's lined up. And give her a punch. Okay, and wiggle her back. So I now have three punched holes. I'm gonna use my tiny screwdriver just to push through on those holes because my last layer of interfacing didn't quite cut there. And then on the back here, I'm just gonna trim these away, these little flaps. Yes, you will notice I'm not using the interfacings the pattern calls for, doing my own thing. I tend to do that a lot. Depends what I have handy and depends what I'm making the bag out of. In this case, the leather, I treat it differently. All right, so I now have a place for this to go. And I should be able to rest it on those holes. And it looks pretty good. So let's turn this over. I'm going to hold a piece of fabric over top of this just in case. I don't want it getting scratched or anything. It's a leather bag. I want to look good when it's done. And here I'm going to push my material down around those holes. Okay, I'm just using my nail. And I don't need it to push all the way down. I just want to make sure that the um, connector is staying in the right spot. Looks like I didn't get this hole perfectly placed, but that's okay. My material will stretch around it. And sometimes I'll even use a little flathead screwdriver just to make sure everything's in its right spot. Okay. So the next step would be to take the backing plate that we took off of it. And there is a finished side to it. You can see where it's got a nice print on it. And then a flat side. The flat side is what I'm going to put against my bag. Um, you can also add some glue between your bag and the connector. I feel that the three screws and all the stabilizers I have back here are going to be good enough for me. So I'm not going to glue it. And then grab a screw. I'm grabbing one of the long screws that I pulled out of my connector at the very beginning and dropping it in. And no, I'm not putting Loctite on it immediately. I want to make sure everything lines up and is in its right place before I put the permanent Loctite in there. The other reason I'm doing this is because sometimes your screws are going to be a touch too long, such as this one. This one has two screws that were already in the connector hardware. And I've found that with the stabilizers and interfacings I'm using, they're too long. So I'm just gonna get this last one in here and show you what I mean. The last screw is a shorter one that came with my set. So let's see if I can show you the extra length on those. I'm not sure, but This one down here is completely flush, but these ones up at the top are sticking out. It's not the end of the world. And if I were using foam, they probably wouldn't stick out, but I'm not. So I have already attached a piece of Peltex on this side and I just left it long so I can attach it on this side as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where Oh, I did cut through that one. Mark where my holes are here. I'm sure I have a marking tool around here somewhere. Yep, yeah. right there. We'll cut those. I find Peltex is the best for this because it does add that thickness. It's got the uh, strength and durability to that we use in bag bottoms anyways, so it's going to hold my hardware. 
Okay, so as you can see, there's a number of good reasons not to tighten your screws all the way or put the Loctite on your screws right away. This being one of those reasons. So I'm going to take this one out. And take this one out. I don't know what I would do without that magnetic bowl. I'd be lost. You'll also see my name is all over a bunch of stuff. I was recently hosting the Great Alberta Baganeer Getaway and a number of my tools I had at a public table. So they've all got my label on them, so I got them back. Just loosening off that bottom one. And I'm lining this up, making sure it's in the right place and I can see through my holes. And I'll slip this one back up here. And try my screws again. Oh, look at that. My screws now fit flush against the hardware backing. Okay, so it's perfectly smooth there. It's not sticking out extra. So now I can take that time to put my Loctite in. Yes, it's a lot of screwing and unscrewing and rescrewing and unscrewing, but if you get into that practice, then you won't Loctite yourself into a situation. <laughs> All right, a little bit of Loctite, insert it into the hole and tighten her up. Now, normally, screws that I get with my hardware require this teeny tiny Phillips screwdriver. However, sometimes you do need a full size one. If I used my little teeny tiny Phillips on this hardware, I'd start stripping the screws pretty quickly because it's not the right size. So be sure you you do see what size of screwdriver you can use because there's multiple sizes for a reason, as my husband, the mechanic, would tell me. He likes to buy all those tools with all those sizes. Okay, so just tightening this one up really good. Excellent. And one last one at the bottom that I need to lock tight. So again, just a few tips for you. If the screws appear to be a little bit too long, don't panic. Add some stabilizer. If instructions don't come with your hardware, just ask someone from the uh, hardware store or someone who uses it is probably happy to help. If you're installing this type of hardware on a fabric bag, I would definitely recommend some fray check on your holes before you um, insert anything. Um, I try to keep my plastic on my hardware as long as I possibly can. Otherwise, I'm going to scratch it at some point. So in this case, I'm just keeping that last little piece onto the little triangles there. I do have the other plastics here, but they'll probably go in the garbage. Um, use whatever tools you have at hand to mark your straight lines and your placements. In my case, painter's tape works really, really well. It doesn't pull the finish off of my fabrics. It doesn't pull it off of my leathers. Makes me quite happy. So these are the V handbag strap connectors. They come in a set of four. Don't panic when you get multiple pieces because they actually go together really easy. Thanks guys. Don't forget I got this hardware at Bringberry Hardware. So B-R-I-N-G-B-E-R-R-Y hardware.com. Um, and Karen is always helpful on her Facebook group and on her page. And that's one of the reasons I absolutely love working with her hardware. And it's just gorgeous. So hopefully I'll get this bag finished up this week before I head to the camper and you guys will see it on the swoon 
Facebook page. Thanks everyone.